Um, hi, everyone. Um, welcome to our masterclass. Um, you can see here, I've just put up on the screen while we wait for everybody to join. We're a bit early. We've got a couple more minutes. In the chat box, please let us know what city and state are you from and what's your dream agency job? Would you like to be an art director, copywriter, or, or are you undecided at the moment? And that's okay as well. Okay, we're going to get started now. Award acknowledges the traditional custodians of the land in which we share and commit to leaving the land in a better place. We pay our respect to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge their culture of storytelling through art, dance and music. Tonight's agenda is all about teaching you how to tackle a creative brief. I'm going to share a little about award school if you don't already know much about that. Our first session is with Kieran Maroney from VML YNR, and he's going to take you through a real brief that he faced. Session two is tackling the creative brief. And Ryan and Huey, who are on our video there, give us a wave, um, are going to take you through that section and also have a look at um, the practice brief that we supplied to some of you um, if you registered early on as a Patagonia brief and we'll share with you um, some of your responses with feedback. We'll also run a live Q&A. If we don't get to your questions tonight, we will be able to come back um, and you'll be able to email me any of those questions and we can answer. About award school. So I'm just going to share with you um, uh, a short video. So in summary, Award School is a 12-week part-time program. You are able to work in a full-time job, in a full-time capacity. It's a part-time program. Um, the program is offered online or in person in your state. At the application process, you need to pick one, whether you do it online or which state you're going to do the program in. In-person tutorials are held at creative agencies. So you get to really experience what it's like working in an ad agency. All lecturers and tutors are industry leaders, so you learn from the very best in our industry. By the end of the program, you'll have a folio of work, and if you're seeking a job in the industry, this will set you up in great stead. The course can open the doors for so many amazing careers, even outside the ad industry. We've seen comedians, product developers, entrepreneurs, you name it. Um, it's, it's a course that lends itself to many creative roles. So key dates for your diary. We're running a virtual webinar format information night on the 6th of February. Um, applications open on the 8th of February and they close strictly on the 22nd of February. Course dates are March to July next year and we have a graduation ceremony in August 2024. Um, the information night is worthwhile attending. You'll also hear from different voices and, and, and get some more inspiration around your application. Session one. I'm going to pass over to Kieran. Thank you very You're much. There, Kieran. Thank you. Yeah, it's uh, great to be here. Uh, as Amy said, I'm a creative director at VML YNR. Completed award school in 2006. Uh, it's going back a little bit now. And I uh, am the outgoing award school head uh, for the last two years. And we are in great hands going forward with Huey and Ryan. Uh, so uh, I'll take you into the next page and we can start taking a look at a, um, a real piece of work and maybe a little bit more about myself we just tap on. Oh, yeah, so here's uh, some stuff I've made over the time. I've made Anzac biscuits to bring Australia and New Zealand closer together, drink spike detecting wristbands, I've had voiceover artists jump out of planes and deliver their script there, brought back the solo man and huge campaigns for the Navy and Vic government as well as created products from a future we don't want to live in. So just a couple of little bits from me. Uh, but the particular piece of work I'm going to speak about today is called Fit Chicks and how we change the egg industry one step at a time. This was for a client called Honest Eggs, um, and they are regenerative farm eggs. 
you might wonder, what does regenerative mean? Or maybe you, you're wise to the word and you do. But uh, yeah, Honest Eggs came to us and they had a fantastic product. Um, you know, there's only 30 hens per hectare. That's like 50 hens per cricket ground kind of thing, uh, which means there's, you know, heaps of room for these chickens to, to run around. But there was a really uh, like low awareness and understanding of that point of difference and what um, that meant. So there's an industry insight that we uh, kind of came across when we approached this work. Um, and that, that is that for eggs to be called free range, the farm must have a density of less than 10,000 chickens per hectare. And I'm sure when everyone thinks of free range, you go, oh, I'm doing the right thing. Like I'm not buying eggs from a cage. But when you actually look into that a bit further, it's a bit different than what you might think. These eggs all here are pretty much all claiming to be free range. You can see the words free range everywhere. So it's a massive sea of free range. And when you pair that with the fact that you can have 10,000 chickens per hectare, um, it's, uh, it's a bit of a conundrum. Uh, so there's, there is one fact that on the previous slide that farms must declare, we just go up, uh, must declare the density on the packaging. So here, look at that beautiful open field. They've actually, they actually have an outdoor density of 10,000 birds per hectare. Now, if you look at that beautiful field and you skip the, step to the next page, that's actually what a hectare looks like. So could you imagine 10,000 chickens there? It's totally different to the packaging. Uh, but that's what we were competing against. So the brief was to show people how much more room the chickens have on Honest Eggs Co. Farms. And that's a real shot from their farm on the left. So they actually do uh, walk the talk Um, so what we did to show that was something totally new that showed how free the chickens actually are. We um, designed a backpack for them called the Fit Chicks Tracker. And this uh, backpack measured the steps that the chicken would take each day. And we didn't just put the first design on there. We went through rounds of rounds of testing. We tested it on chickens in backyards and then chickens on the farm. And we got feedback from what worked and what didn't and slowly developed a device that was as light as possible and as inobtrusive as possible for the chicken. Um, and of course, they didn't wear it every day. You just wear it, wear them, you know, once a week or whatever it may be to get, to get an idea of, you know, how uh, far they get to step around each day. And here they are in the field, doing some field testing with the uh, Fit Chicks tracker on the back. Uh, and by doing this uh, you know, piece of innovation, it actually allowed us to innovate something that has been the same since forever, pretty much. Um, we've been able to make a better egg because the egg can literally communicate the, its backstory and the, the story of the farm where all other um, you know, eggs couldn't do that. And then we told people about it. You know, we put it into outdoor. We actually even put their steps on Strava. But um, yeah, we had something to you know tell the world, climb to the top of the mountain and shout it. And uh, then next up, we actually created a point of difference amongst the clutter of free range on the shelf. So we really went to war against all the other um, eggs on the shelf with the thinking here, because we needed to prove how much better these eggs were and to really debunk what free range is. So the results for this, Honest Eggs has become so popular. They've they sold out at launch. They have been struggling all year to meet demand, which has meant that they've had some had good problems effectively, where they've had to rent new farmland to increase their uh, number of chickens to meet demand. Um, they're, yeah, they're being stocked in many more stores and they couldn't be happier with the rate of growth, attention and uh, sales that they've got. For us as a creative agency, um, it's been a really great project as well. Not only have we helped this client grow and it's increased their budgets with us so we can do more advertising and work for them, but we've also won a lot of creative awards. I think we're 
looking at 75 and still counting. Maybe we'll crack 100. That is the end of what I have to say about Fitchix. As I am the outgoing award school head, I'll pop my head in this beautiful guillotine and um, pass over the chalice and to uh, the two new heads. But in the meantime, uh, you get the wonderful and the majestic and the super organized Amy Lee. Um, thanks so much, Kieran, and and thank you so much for the last two years um, helping with award school. You've been, you know, so wonderful to work with. So thanks again. Um, passing it over now to our new Victorian um, school heads for Victoria, yeah, Victoria school heads. We've got Quay and we've got Ryan. Quay is the senior art director at Clemenger BBDO, and Ryan is creative director at Ogilvy, both based in Melbourne. I'm going to pass it over to you guys. Um, just let me know when you want me to change the slides. Awesome. And thanks, Kieran, for that uh, lovely intro. Um, thank you for your sacrifice too. And thank you for that insight into the Honest Eggs campaign. It's amazing. Thank you. Really great. Very dramatic. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. So the way that we've kind of formatted this is, um, you know, when we applied for award school all those years ago, what are the main questions that we really wanted to know? So here are five questions, including the group's feedback um, for the brief that some of you uh, contributed to. And then, as Amy said, if you have any more questions, just pop them in the Q&A box down below. Um, so the topics we're going to cover and the questions that we wanted to know when we're in your position was, you know, where do I even begin? How do you start? Um, what is it that makes a good idea? We'll sort of unpack that and break down some elements of that. What are the judges looking for? You know, the people assessing how you get into this course. Um, then we'll get into your submissions with some group feedback. Uh, and then, you know, what to do now you know what you do at the end of applying and in between then right let's get into it where do i even begin <laughs> big question <laughs> uh this might seem like an obvious one but the first one is read the brief as kieran kind of just talked you through the brief is really everything and we really appreciate those people that um tried to do the the practice brief that we set out but the brief will contain everything you need to know about what we're asking for. So highlight keywords. And the main thing on the brief that you should really pay attention to, I'm not saying you shouldn't pay attention to it all, but the main thing you want to remember is that single-minded proposition. It's that one thing that your ad needs to communicate. Next step is, you know, do your research. So if you don't know the products, it's a good time to take some time and learn about it. Um, you know, go to the website, read the Wikipedia page. Um, a good place to go is the comment section on the social media pages. You get lots of good insights there from real customers. Uh, you know, ask your Uber driver, ask your mum. Just sort of do a deep dive on the product and, and figure out, you know, what it is about this product. I think everyone that works in advertising has moms that we've just bombarded with questions. <laughs> All right, number three, uh, what do you do now? So you've read the brief, you've filled your head with all this information and you know what everyone's talking about. Uh, number three is just get it all out. Like we all go through this phase where you just need to kind of purge your brain. So uh, fill 50 boxes. When you get into award school, this is something that the tutors will talk to you about, but what you wanna do is just kind of get every single minute thought, whether it's an idea or not, just get it out create lists, um, notes on iPhones, really good for that. Any kind of themes around it. So like uh, Kieran's example before, you know, uh, are there kind of insights like um, free range eggs need to say how many birds they have per hectare. That's a really great way into a brief, but whatever it is, just don't curate yourself. Now's not the time to edit, just kind of get it all out. And that kind of helps you sift through the thought process to get to the good stuff. Yeah, this is the time to really blue sky and not sort of get too judgmental on your own work. You know, like Quay said, it's just literally get as much out as you can, move on and just keep going as, as long as you can. Next step. Um, and then, you know, step four is take a break. So, you know, you've worked hard, you've actively attacked this problem. Then maybe it's time to just put your phone away, turn off the Wi-Fi yourself you know can you find inspiration just by thinking about your problem um if if you're like me and you're active you might go for a walk a run or a swim or as way just admitted to me before this meeting go for a sleep you know whatever works it could be that you try a new food that you've never tasted but um you know after a period of actively attacking 
it's good to also rest and let your subconscious you know, kind of kick in. Yeah, I love doing dishes and taking naps. So I don't know. We have our different ways, you know? <laughs> All right, number four. Um, yeah, so when you're taking a break, actually your subconscious does a lot of the work. Not much happens when you're in this kind of like stressed out mode. So go for a walk. That's really the best thing. And just get ready to capture those kind of gems that come to you at 4 a.m. when you're trying to fall asleep. Even if they're sort of half formed, like just write it. It, it often helps because you can come back and then articulate, you know, where that thought was taking you at a later point. Yeah. To use Fit Chicks examples, it would have been like chicken with pedometers and that's your note, you know, and what a, a great idea that was. Um, step five is, you know, putting it all together. Unfortunately, using Donald Trump here as a reference, but it's a great demonstration of that, you know, really simple illustrations and, uh, and words essentially here. Um, so it's, we call it an award school format because it's black pen, it's a sketch or a scan, and then a really simple typeset copy, you know, for a print brief. Um, the rest you'll kind of get taught once you're in an agency and you can learn from other people. All right, so into the next section. So what makes a good idea? So the first thing we talk about here, there's sort of three steps to, to breaking down how an idea is assessed internally in an agency. And the first one is the insight. Um, so for, for Kieran's example, it would have been, you know, perhaps people aren't aware of how big, you know, a hectare is in that case, but it's what it is is a true revelation that sort of no one else seems to be talking about. Um, I've been told before that, you know, it's good to think like Jerry Seinfeld. And what I mean by that is um, if you've ever watched the intro to the show, he'd be like, have you ever noticed this or isn't it funny how this happens you know, it's that kind of thinking that insightful thinking um the second point there is McCann's kind of credo which is truth well told um for people new to the industry it might seem odd that advertising is about telling the truth but this is really where strong insights come from it comes from a place of truth um and you'll learn this kind of once you start getting into award school with your tutors and, and unpacking that uh it could be an observation about people or culture you know, something that you discover in a Reddit thread or one of the comments on any of those meta platforms. But yeah, what what's the truest thing that you can say about this product, even if it is a bit controversial? All right, number two. So now you've got your insight. Uh, how do you come up with an idea? So I guess a really great way of thinking of an idea is it's kind of connecting two existing things together. So these two things exist separately. There's chickens and there's pedometers right? And the creativity kind of comes from connecting those two and being like, hey, have we ever thought of putting pedometers on chickens? <laughs> um, and that's kind of where the idea comes from. So where what we're looking for in award school applications is um, the dramatization of the single-minded proposition. We'll kind of explain that um, later on when we actually look at that practice brief together. But again, it's that one thing that, you know, someone looking at your ad with fresh eyes, not having read the brief will take away from your ad. Um, so you, what you want to do is also draw visual or written parallels on things you found researching. So, you know, it depends whether you're more visual minded or more kind of literary minded person. But, you know, little drawings like as you would doodling in your, your sketchbook and things like that all kind of help you organize and find that idea. And lastly, uh, oh. lastly, with your idea, if we could please go back, <laughs> is attaching a human emotion. So the, the feeling that you get when you have an idea is something that you have a reaction to, you know, whether that makes you laugh or makes you kind of think about something a little bit differently or makes you kind of change your perspective on something. That's kind of the, the hints that you found something worth, you know, sharing with other people. And then lastly is the execution. And as we sort of touched on before, this is quite particular for award school. Um, you know, we have a really specific format. And the reason we do that is that we want to focus on the idea itself. Um, when you're in an agency, it's different in that you execute, you know, with much more polish. Um, but for now, it's all about focusing on what is that idea that's come from that insight. So yeah, it's that award school format of black pen, sketch and copy, and then, and exercise in reductionism. So the, the picture you can see here 
um, is that in practice essentially? You know, what can you take out of this to make it as simple and quickly communicated as possible? Number three, what are the judges looking for? What are they looking for, Ryan? Well, we've created a little uh, assessment triangle, which we've dubbed Wayne and Ryan's inverted assessment triangle. And this is a quick way, if we can jump to the next slide, um, to help you assess your own ideas. You know, once once you've gone through that process of getting all your ideas out, your 50 boxes, your list, whatever it is, you know, then it comes a time to kind of assess. And this is a good method of doing that. So based on the previous three slides we saw, we've got our insight idea execution. Ask yourself these questions, you know, is it a truth? Is it a true thing about the product? Is it, you know, an observation that's true about the category, the people or the culture? Top right, is it interesting? You know, does it evoke an emotion? Um, it will make you feel something, whether that's through entertainment, it could be funny, it could make you cry, um, any kind of those emotions. And then finally, is it simple? You know, what, what can you remove to still get the idea across simply and in the most interesting manner? And we'll come back to this triangle in a little bit too. You'll see a lot of this triangle going through. Big fan of triangles. All right, now we come to the fun part, the practice brief. Oh, sorry, could you please go back? Uh, just to the brief, please. <laughs> I think one more. Oh, uh, no. Everyone close your eyes. <laughs> So we touched on before um, this idea of the single-minded proposition. So if it's something you've not heard of before, um, a key principle for advertising is essentially to have, you know, one one singular thought that you want to get across. And that's what we call the single-minded proposition. Um, so for the practice brief. Yeah. So to summarize the brief, it's for um, Patagonia, which is, you know, an outdoor clothing brand uh, that's doing lots of great stuff for the planet. It's kind of inbuilt in their business model, which is why we loved it so much. And the single-minded proposition that we challenged you with was to demonstrate long-lasting clothes for you and the planet. And the format that we were asking for here is a poster. So just, you know, something you might see on a bus shelter or a um, magazine, if you still buy those, <laughs> just something on a page. Again, this is just for us to just see your thinking as simply as possible. Um, just want to acknowledge too that not everyone's had a chance to respond to this brief. Uh, what we're going to be doing in the future is releasing a practice brief every week up until Christmas. So we'll talk more to that at the end, just FYI. Fun Christmas present. But they are really good practice briefs and um, you'll kind of learn the format of, of reading these briefs and it'll really help you with your award school application. Okay, so now we're getting into the work that you submitted and thank you all for submitting. So there were a few standouts and you know this particular one, we just wanted to talk about, you know, the triangle at work. Is it true? Is it interesting? Is it simple? Um, I think it's a it's a clean sweep for us here. It's it's a really simple layout. This idea that, you know, these clothes are going to outlast you, benefit for you and the planet. It's great. Simple logo. Yeah, it's very simple and it's quite funny as well. Yeah. <laughs> On the next slide, please. This again plays off the same idea, you know, like clothes outlasting you is a really simple idea. And um, what they've done here is kind of added their own flavor to it and uh, added this kind of sense of humor that these two skeletons are hiking up the mountain. <laughs> so it's a really good combination of, uh, you know, picture and copy. Yeah, very, very macabre, but very funny. Yeah, we like the macabre. And then again, um, you know, this idea of the clothing being passed down through generations that it lasts so long. Fantastic, um, you know, seamless integration of the logo uh, and a really simple idea, you know, not introducing the actual T-shirt itself, literally just focusing on that label. Nice and simple. It's true, interesting, simple. Yeah, so what you'll see as we go through the work, there's plenty of great works in um, that was submitted already, but what you'll see is the same idea kind of coming up over and over again. And it's really there to show you that um, execution and simplicity will get you noticed in award school. Okay, now just getting into some group feedback. So as why you kind of touched on just then, there were some common themes kind of coming through. Um, so you'll see this work presented in that way. We've kind of grouped a few things together. We'll elaborate as much as we can on each different piece, um, but a lot of it will be kind of general 
to a few different common themes. And we just wanted to, you know, remind everyone here that, you know, we understand it's super vulnerable to put your ideas out there. It's, it feels kind of scary sometimes and still does, still to does, be honest. Yeah. And it's something that does get better with time. Um, and we want to also reiterate that you learn as much from what to do as what not to do. So, you know, the kind of point of this exercise is for us to all learn together. Uh, you will see the same idea expressed differently. We'll kind of talk you through the, that kind of same idea and show you how several different people have come at it from different ways. Uh, what we're looking for is clear communication and creativity. So especially at this part of the process, excuse me, um, what we're looking for is kind of that creative aptitude and the ability to communicate that prop. And lastly, uh, the works that you see here, like we're not here to shame anyone, you know, we're all here to learn together. Award school will kind of teach you the rest um, in smaller groups with plenty of tutor time and plenty of feedback. So today is just like very tough. Broad strokes. Very broad, like one stroke. Yeah, one stroke. <laughs> <laughs> all right, with that, let's get into it. So yeah, we sort of had those top three, which you can see at the top, which were, for us were the kind of standouts. Um, these on this page, it's probably some examples of what might get in, you know, the ideas that look like they might get in. Um, the things that are working really strongly here for us, really clear ideas, um, simple drawings, so only including the really necessary elements. Um, and on proposition, you know, that's really important, which is the single minor proposition, um, that thing that you're highlighting at the very start in step one, make sure that's coming through as clearly and strongly as possible. Yeah, so we highlighted, you know, the ideas on this page just in the bottom left there to kind of step you through what an idea is, because I didn't understand what an idea was for no, the longest time. Um, but say things like your clothes outliving you is an idea. And the top three kind of express that in different ways. So whether that's through granny's will or like two skeletons hiking yep. up a mountain, it's the same idea. And you'll see kind of like the idea of passing garments through generations done quite a few times here. So, you know, really great thoughts there, but how simple can you get it is really the key. Yeah. And I think you can sort of see even the the idea of, you know, the clothes passing through generations. There's quite a few examples of that. Um, the top middle, you know, just did it in the most simple fashion. So middle row uh, on the fourth along, you know, that that's showing the t-shirt, but again, it's just that reductionism. How How simple can you make it? Yeah, whether that's zooming in or, you know, just removing words or removing parts of the illustrations. Two kind of unique ones here on this page uh, on the bottom left is this idea of clothes having an expiry date, which we thought was super interesting. Very cool. Feels yeah. like a really big idea and really cool. So um, we thought we'd include that on this page. And then another kind of unique one that we saw was on the bottom right fun right uh which is this idea of the planet and um the person aging together and they did this through a very kind of interesting visual so you don't really have to be you know always looking to combine a picture and copy not necessarily like if you can actually get it to that level of simplicity where the wrinkles on the person's hand match the wrinkles the rings on the tree trees don't wrinkle <laughs> and just with a logo like that's mm, yeah. beautiful simplicity Chef's kiss. yeah Chef's kiss. But really well done to everyone on this yeah, page. Fantastic. Um, stepping through, so these are some pretty good examples of an idea. Um, you know, there's some really strong positives that we're seeing here. We're seeing like, you know, a clear idea. Um, we do think some of them could be simplified. There is a bit of ambiguity in some of them in terms of, you know, what it's saying to the audience. Um, but yeah, what's what's the simplest way that you can communicate that thought, you know, wearing it through generations? Um, what we have examples of here too are that we have, you know, twisted images and what we say in that case, so when your image is, you know, quite unique, you probably want a headline that sort of is quite straight. So twisted image, straight headline to help explain the image, um, and, and vice versa. If the headline's twisted, the image needs to be straight. Yeah. A really good test for that is like, if you have a twisted image, you know, if you literally just copy and paste the prop on the side, does it make sense? Yep. That's a really good test. Um, we don't recommend that necessarily for award school, but it is a really good uh, test for yourself whether your ad is kind of coming across and being understood clearly. So actually on this page, we ha have two ideas that kind of were 
um, reiterated from the previous page, this idea of passing your clothes down. So if you look at the top right, there's like kind of like a mantelpiece with uh, what appears to be a whole family wearing the same kind of clothes. That's the same idea. But what we felt was, you know, it could still be simplified. You know, this is a really good thought, but um, simplification is key. Again, this is something your tutors will work with you on, but you know, the, the faster you get, the more you'll get out of award school. Um, a couple more uh, themes here on the bottom left, you'll see kind of like these dinosaur bones and this like evolution hominid, uh, which was <laughs> also a really interesting theme of uh, clothes becoming artifacts. So we think that's a really great idea, but again, like wh what's the simplest that could get there? So these are all really close. Uh, just need to kind of zoom in or just get their razor and start rubbing things out. Yeah. And these these are the kind of things that your tutors will eventually help you refine and whittle down, you know, to its core elements. But good examples and, you know, great effort from everyone. Um, these ones, you know, they were nearly there. They, you can, we could see where they were headed with the thought. Um, but there are a few things that weren't quite gelling, um, mainly the communication of the prop, um, which is, you know, that single-minded proposition, again, just making sure that comes through as clearly as possible. Um, yeah, like long-lasting clothes for you and the planet. Um, like I can kind of see how some of, uh, you, you know, you got there to, to these ideas. Like in the bottom, the bottom three, it's kind of playing off that idea that clothes last for a lifetime. Therefore, it's like marriage. Ryan's getting married this weekend. Um, but, you know, that's an idea, but we feel like it just kind of needed a little bit, a little bit more to kind of talk about the long lastingness of the clothes for you and the planet. It sort of missed out on that, that second half. Yeah, that particular example Huey mentioned is a really good example of, you know, it's a twisted visual, but it needs a straight headline. So you probably could have just said that a bit straighter with your headline in that case. But yeah, interesting direction. Um, but just slightly off at the moment. Yeah, like if we were to, you know, I'll give an example, the cut of jacket in the, what do you call it, ring box? Yep. Uh, if you had long lasting clothes for you and the planet, you know, that would kind of get you a slightly a step closer. Um, the, the top two there, you know, like the top left, those are really interesting actually, yeah. when yeah. we realized it was a, a magnifying glass and we're like, oh, small footprint, that's, you know, such an interesting visual. However, it feels like the prop just felt slightly away from long lasting clothes for you and the planet. And I know we're bringing like real Grinches about the prop, but the, that is the one thing that award school trains you to do is to be super, super clear on what you're trying to communicate here. Yeah. So people who are judging this, they're looking at these fairly rapidly. So the more quickly your idea can talk to them, the better. And I think even seeing it in this thumbnail format is a really good assessment of that. Um, some similar ideas on this page too, you know, a smaller footprint, um, but just again, slightly off there. Uh, the clothing outliving you and again, clothing for a lifetime. So all sort of right paths, but not quite executed. All right. Uh, so we're trying to play off this here, but uh, threads of an idea, but not twisted enough. And again, when we say twisted, we mean just like a little unexpected, a little kooky. So all the ideas on this page have elements that could work. They just kind of needed a little bit more of a, a creative twist. You know, some of them kind of felt a bit too um, factual or a bit too, it's just giving me information, but it's not kind of giving me that feeling, you know, that that thing that we're told you to look for an idea, something that gives you a reaction, whether it's funny or that kind of aha moment. Yeah, you'll hear that measure quite a lot, um, straight and twisted. So yeah, like the previous examples sort of had that more twisted visual, but some of these feel a little straighter. Um, again, interesting elements, but yeah, we just kind of want that exciting, interesting element. What is that? Yeah, for sure. Like, you know, if we if we were in an award school tutorial, you know, your tutors would be able to sit here for longer and really tease out the kind of threads of um, of ideas here. But I think for the, the kind of application process, uh, Ryan said before, what we want is like a really quick uh, communication. So if we look here, like some, some of these have um, pretty long body copy and we think, you know, that's probably something that's best saved for the briefs that you'll do in award school, like yeah, TV, audio, TV, yeah, radio, 
that sort of thing. When we're, we come to judge a print ad, we really want the least amount of words and the least amount of drawing as possible. Yeah. Another way to think of twisted and straight is literal and lateral. So you might hear that it's quite literal. And I think, you know, some of these, particularly the half-half examples, it's quite a literal interpretation of the proposition, whereas we kind of want that lateral odd connection, you know, like the hands and the pedometers, for example. Exactly. Actually, it's good that you mentioned the the clothing mountain here, because there was a an example on the previous page where there was like a mountain biker, like biking off uh, a yep. landfill mountain onto what can only assume to be Everest. Um, but that's kind of like a, a more twisted visual of Correct. the same yep. idea. Yeah. So that was for us a little step closer to where what we're looking for. I can go to the next one. Um, and then this is the inverse. So, you know, uh, these ones are probably too twisted. So another way to explain that is they might be a little convoluted in what they're trying to convey. Um, or we can often call that adding layers, you know, to confuse the meaning. And this is all about trying to make your idea single-minded, you know, instead of having multiple layers or multiple things going on, what's, what's that one singular thought that you can extract from that to communicate your idea? Um, and of course, how's the simplest way to say that? So we really liked, you know, where that hieroglyphic example was going, um, but it, it feels a bit too far away from the product. And the headline is probably a little bit too ambiguous in this case, but that is exactly the right train of thought. You know, it's, these clothes are so good, they can last this long, but again, it's just sort of missing that main proposition and the product, I would say. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it kind of hurt us a bit to put it on this page because it was, we could see where you were coming from, but if you look past um, at some of the earlier slides, that was that theme of clothing becoming artifacts, which was a great idea. But this example went a little bit too far. It kind of took, we went too lateral and it, we kind of, the dots that we were trying to connect became too far apart. Um, and the other kind of examples on this page is also, um, I think trying to say too many things. So if you really just show it to your mom or your Uber driver um, and see whether they can understand and basically reiterate the prop to you, that would be ace. Yeah, a way to think about this is if, you know, somebody throws you three balls in the air, you can only catch one. So it's like, what what is that one ball you want them to catch? And it's got to be an interpretation of that single-minded proposition. Uh, and again, these ones, um, probably both too straight, unfortunately. So we wouldn't call these ideas. They're probably too literal. Um, so yeah, too straight, I would say. What, what we'd suggest here if we were tutoring you guys would be to try and twist either the image or twist the headline. Um, and again, it's just trying to join those dots between those two things that aren't currently joined. Um, and yeah, just we need to flip one, make one you know, slightly more lateral um, just to kind of bring out that, that that interesting element that we're judging on. Uh, yeah, and this one as well, we felt, you know, this is probably one that has too far of a distance between the, the two things that you're trying to connect. I think we're still kind of struggling to understand some of these a little bit. Um, but and to, I'm sure it makes total sense in your brain because I've been there too. But you know, a good test again is show people that haven't worked on the brief and see whether they kind of understand that single-minded prop. Yeah, there's some interesting thoughts here, um, but there is a lot of ambiguity as well. Like particularly uh, top right, like it looks like a great image, but we didn't know how to interpret it. We weren't quite sure what was going on there. And lastly, I know we keep talking about the prop, but um, it is the one thing that you will be judged on in award school. It is uh, the reduction of the brief. Uh, so some of these we felt was saying something different. They're not necessarily bad ideas. They're just kind of not on the proposition for us. Uh, so things like um, a heartfelt commitment to the planet's vital signs doesn't kind of talk about the clothes um, per se or about you in any way. Um, and yeah, if it takes it kind of too long to understand it, you know, it kind of is a, a good sign that it is off prop. There were a few other watch outs. If we can go to the next page. Um, 
you know, we talk a lot about this award school format. Uh, and one of the elements of that is to have really clear drawings. We understand not everyone's, you know, a fantastic drawer. Um, but there's some ways around that, you know, you can, you can trace images if you need to. Um, but yeah, as we've mentioned, you know, the judges are really looking at these very quickly. So the more clear your drawing can be, the more simply your idea is going to convey itself. Exactly. And, and do spend some time drawing um, these things. Like they don't have to be perfectly drawn, but it is clarity, I think, that we're looking for. Yeah. Uh, these particular ones, you know, again, it's that that layering of ideas, like rather than just that that one singular thought. There's really interesting elements in some of this stuff, you know, particularly the top right. You know, you've got that world kind of happening within the washing machine. Um, but then there's just a, probably a few too many elements happening here. Um, and then I think it's just a case of, you know, asking like yourself, why? Why do I need to simplify this? And it's it's to get across that singular message. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, both Ryan and I come from design backgrounds, and we understand the appeal in making something look really cool. But uh, in terms of what award school tests for or, you know, what we, you'll learn at award school, it's kind of like having the, a concept that will go across many different types of formats. So some of these we felt were like cool graphics and cool pictures, but um, it kind of needed to have a little bit more more to it. Yeah, as I said, coming from a design background, this is really something that uh, took me a long time to grasp, the difference between, you know, a sketch layout versus a sketched idea. And I think with time, this will come, particularly if you're doing all these practice briefs. Um, yeah, again, this is not to shame anyone, but it's just to help give some guides in terms of how, you know, your ideas are going to be assessed. Um, just some watch outs, you know, puns, Funny, yes, but probably not for award school. Um, sex jokes, you know, get them out of your system, have them in the first 10 boxes or so Perch. and then move on. Um, uh, don't use photography. No. Yeah. Um, for award school, the, the pen and paper really is the, the key here. And we don't want to, you know, distract from your idea in any way and start, you know, looking at the colors in the background and things like that. Yeah, or investing too much time searching for those images as well, you know. Yeah. Focus on the right. idea. And then lastly is just, uh, you know, the example you can see on the left. So your page is basically your ad, essentially. So we don't have, the judges don't really have time to assess and read all the detail. So it's really got to be presented, you know, as the page is the final content. Whew. All right. Yeah, that was a lot. Take a breath, breathe. You know, we'll get through this. So what What now? What do I do between now and submission? So I think you've got like four months, like no, three months. Let's go three. Three months between now and submission. So uh, as Ryan said, check out the Instagram. There's, there's plenty of stuff there. Go on the next slide, please. All right. So I'm not a religious man, but make this your Bible. This is called Hey Whipple, Squeeze This by Luke Sullivan. This is actually my copy from award school. So it says, uh, it now includes social media. So I think they have an updated version. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another good book is the Advertising Concept Book by Pete Barry. Um, and then the last two are just references of archives of great print work. Like if you're going to be entering this industry, it's really important to understand, you know, what the industry holds as the highest standard. And these are two places you can start to look at that stuff, um, which is, Love the Work More, which is a Khan print archive. Khan is our one of our biggest award shows for the industry. And then DNAD, um, which is another print archive, which is arguably the art director's most desired creative it's award. It's beautiful. So yeah, great places to get inspiration. And you know, people smarter than us have put this into words <laughs> and published it before. So get out there and just like start absorbing, be in that mode of just learning everything you can. Once you've done that, you know, and you're ready to submit, come back to the triangle. Is it true? Is it interesting? Is it simple? And does it communicate the prop clearly? Um, you know, can't emphasize that enough. That, that will be a really strong assessment piece. Exactly. Uh, is your ad based on a solid human truth? I personally love Reddit and YouTube comments. Like, I think it's just filled with the most colorful types of people. But there's lots out there um, in culture. Just read the news. What are people yeah. saying? What are people talking about? That's really good places to find truths. 
um, is your visual or headline interesting? You know, does it evoke that emotion? What What's that interesting piece within it? What's that lateral kind of expression? Uh, and then have you simplified it as much as you can? Is your line concise? And is it a simple visual? What elements don't you need in your A4 page? And this is just a nice mantra to think. This is um, taken from an article by an agency in America called Whedon Kennedy. This is a, made up of, it's hard to tell from the picture, but this is made up of a bunch of push pins, which is in their entryway. And it's a reminder that, you know, creativity is sometimes about failure and you need to do that in order to get to the more interesting and creative ideas. This is why we ask people to do 50 boxes so it's, you can get that done and out of the way, you know, fail harder. So yeah, in any creative endeavor, it's part of the process. You need to just try stuff. Sometimes it's going to fail and that's got, you've got to be okay with that. And this yeah. is something you'll learn too. You're going to get really comfortable with failure and feeling vulnerable about your ideas. Um, the key is to not stop, you know, just keep going and keep coming up with ideas because there's going to be gold. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. We'll speed through the rest, but, you know, you can ask for feedback. Hit up people in agencies, senior copywriters, art directors. Hit up us, ask us for feedback. We're happy to do it. Ah. We've spoken enough uh, time for any other questions that you might have, just submit them in the Q&A box. There's also an uh, actual FAQ online. Uh, if you have any more questions, and I'm sure if you find anyone um, in award school, they'll be happy to answer it. So thank you. Um, that was awesome, guys. Thank you so much for, for sharing your insights on the brief. Um, can I ask but to uh uh, participants, please. Um, is the chat box working now? Can you just share what you thought of the feedback on the Patagonia brief? Um, super helpful, really insightful and interesting. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No, we uh, appreciate all the work. It's hard stuff. Yeah, thanks to everyone that submitted. Um, we're going to record this session so you can rewatch it if you'd like. Um, great feedback, guys. Um, lots of um, and love the triangle was one comment. <laughs> so design um, by Ryan, <laughs> original design. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Ryan. Um, so using the chat box, um, if, if you've got any questions, um, for Ryan Huey or myself, um, please um, please share them in the chat box and we can um, we can answer them. Um, in terms of any questions that you'd like to um, email later on, I, I'm a great contact. My name is Amy Lee and my email is amy at adcouncil.org.au and my details are on the website. Uh, no, sorry, we can't see any um, attendees. So we've just been talking to ourselves here. <laughs> Assume you all are laughing at our jokes. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, there's been a few questions around practice briefs. We're going to put a practice brief up every Tuesday on Instagram until Christmas so you can have a look at. Um, in terms of feedback, um, you'll have to seek that feedback um, yourself. Um, in terms of applicants and how many will be accepted for next year, it depends on state um, and online. Um, we took 65 students in Victoria last year. We had 80 students in Sydney. And for the smaller states, there was around 10. Um, Carly's just asked if a university degree is mandatory for working as a creative in um, advertising. Um, Huey, do you want to expand on on, on what 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 you need to what's what what you need to have as background for a, a creative role in an agency? Uh, tenacity and something wild and weird about you. No, absolutely not. You don't need a university degree, and you know you don't need to go to ad school. It's a really good foundation, but so long as you love creating stuff like that's going to get you really far. Like creative directors just want to see people who love creating things and can say something really simply. So uh, yeah, not, not required. I've heard this expressed before as, you know, people who are interesting and interested, which is, I think is a really good summary. Um, you know, people that have that unique 
thing about them that they're passionate about that will get you a long way in an agency because we're all nerds and we love creativity. That's kind of the best part. You yeah. just hang out with weirdos all yeah. day, get paid for it. <laughs> um, so just going to work through some of these questions. I'm not going to get to all of them or we're not going to get to all of them. Um, in, in terms of Jenna asked the question, if there's only 10 spaces open in my city, am I better to apply for the online program? Um, there's a similar amount of spaces in the online program um so um my recommendation if you're in a major city is to apply for that city one so that you've got the in-person experience if you're in a regional town or overseas online's perfect for you um in terms of having a look at um applications from previous years we can't share application um, responses from previous years but it is a great pl place to start on the award school website and you can see all of the work that was submitted for last year to get a an idea of, of the the layout um, the simplicity of the ideas um, that would be a good starting point um Um, Jessica Song has just asked a question about opportunities in terms of working in the industry, internships and connecting with like-minded professionals. Ryan, do you want to explain what happens at a tutorial and how you are, how you are paired with an agency? Yeah, of course. Um, so what will happen once you're successfully inducted into the program, you'll be divided up into two different uh, agencies. So the course is split. Is it 14 weeks, Amy, or 12 weeks? 12 weeks. Yeah, and it's an even split between your first agency and then another agency. And sometimes even within that six weeks, you'll get two lots of tutors. Um, so that's that's your opportunity to kind of meet and talk to people within an agency and kind of understand, you know, what, what types of roles and even their background and how they got in. So plenty of exposure from the tutorials. Yeah. Um. Henrik's just asked about um, recommendations to follow um, on LinkedIn with ideas um, uh, in terms of people. And and my suggestion with that is to, to have a look at the trade press. And so Campaign Brief, Ad News, Umbrella, B&T, they often um, showcase work and list the creative teams behind them. And there's probably work there that, that you would quite like. And so you could actually um, use the named people there um, and, and, and contact them. People are really, really happy to help and mentor you. Um, they really understand award school and the application process within the industry. It's very well regarded. Um, um, Emma, um, I'm going to pass to Huey. Emma has asked, what's an example of a junior role to submit for an agency um, to work your way up? Would you start as a copywriter? Um, and 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 is, is that how you would suggest getting in the industry? Oh, there's so many ways to get in the industry. But yeah, the kind of classic is the junior art director copywriter combo. Um, that's probably the, the clearest route in, but I've seen people come in through, you know, business management or social media mar marketing and things like that. Uh, so, uh, what award school is really good at is that you get exposed to these agencies. And once you kind of have that connection, you can kind of talk to people to find the opportunities that exist. Um, Brett has asked about why Sydney and Melbourne have more space as opposed to the smaller states. Um, the reason for that is the number of applications. Um, it's significantly greater on the East Coast in terms of applications and also the agency numbers as well. So we had 15 agencies in Melbourne participating in award school so they can cater for more students, whereas in WA it was smaller than, than that. Um, Todd has asked about applying for both online and in-person you can only apply for one program, either online or in person in your state. Um, Ryan, I might um, pass to you about um, about the layout. Can you use Adobe Illustrator? Do you want to talk about maybe uh, tracing um, illustrations and laying text over the top? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as Amy mentioned before, the Award School website's a really good reference point for this. Have a look at the historical work, see what's come before you. Um, this is that award school format we talk about. Um, of course, you can use Illustrator, but you know the trap here is to get stuck in designing an Illustrator. We, all we're looking for is a really simply communicated idea. So it's got to be stripped back to bare bones. Um, you know, you can find a pic from Google, for example, and trace that. But yeah, I think probably the award school website is your best point of reference in terms of level of, you know, um, craft, I guess. 
Yeah. Um, Hannah has just asked if she can work full time in a creative agency and do this on the side. Why? How does that work? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, award school is part time, um, and you kind of get as much as you you put into it, really. So we've had a lot of people who are working full time in all sorts of industries and do award school at the same time. Uh, you might need to kind of, you know, get better at time management, but it's definitely doable. In fact, if you're in, in an agency, you already have like people to bounce your ideas off. So that's really useful too. Um, Ryan, we've just got a question around the difference between an art director and a copywriter. Yep. Yep. So this was also something new to me coming from a design background. Um, so the way advertising creative department works is historically a copywriter is paired with an art director. So the delineation there is that the copywriter traditionally is in charge of the language, you know, headlines, uh, writing scripts, uh, performance, that kind of thing. And then the art director is generally in charge of the visuals. So, you know, someone's got to put it together. We put them in a team because we find it just works, you know, um, you bounce off each other, you uh, can complement each other's strengths. Um, and it just, it seems to work and it has done for 50 years. Yeah. Um. Um, everybody, it's 7.30, so I suggest we go for another 10 minutes with some q and I still know that there's a lot of participants. Is that okay, Ryan and Huey? Of course, yeah. Okay, so go another 10 minutes. So Emily's asked about um, writing content. Um, Emily, this course is about coming up with ideas in, um, and each brief will be a different media. So it'll be um, coming up with a print idea, a TV idea, a radio idea. So in terms of writing content, it's not so much about that. It's about the overall idea. Um, Amanda's just asked about, is there a cap on how many students you'll take in person in Sydney? And yes, there will be a cap. It's approximately 80 students in Sydney. Um, Jess has asked, um, Huey, I'll pass this to you. Um, would you recommend for people to apply if their primary interest is strategy rather than design? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Like, I would say... Uh... You would get a lot from award school in terms of uh, learning whether you want to be in strategy or business management. Like some people who are already in business management do award school just for to see what it's like, not necessarily to, to move it into it. And I think the better of a strategist you are, the better of a creative you are as well. So it's 100% useful. And I think the, the final brief is actually almost purely strategic Um so by the end of the course, you'll, you'll definitely know if that's your bent, you know, strategy. Um, Hazel's asked a question around if she signs up for Melbourne in person um, and, and then has booked a holiday, I'd like to join online classes for those days. Um, unfortunately, you can't swap around the, the programs. So if you're in the Melbourne in person, that's what you're in. Um, some of our lectures are actually um, pre-recorded and provided remotely. So you might find out that it won't affect you at all. Anyway, you may just need to um, zoom into a tutorial, which won't be a problem. Um, you'll just need to talk to your tutors about that. Sarah's asked if Queensland is considered a small state. And yes, it is. It's approximately, it's between 12 and 20 students that they take. Um, Remy Ryan has asked about working through a bad brief. <laughs> we would like to say that all award school briefs are great. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, this this is a, a fact of the industry, you know. Um, not every brief is a Patagonia brief. We set that intentionally because we want people to be excited. There will come a time when you have to work on something you may not want to work on. Um, and that's, I think, a really good exercise in you know, removing yourself out of that equation. It's like, I'm, I'm here to service the audience. So how can I research and find out about what excites that particular person, you know, and then create something for them rather than yourself? Um, Huey, Andrew's just asked about choosing between a few good ideas. Because just a reminder, you can only submit one idea for each question in the application workshop. It's or hard. The application process. It's hard. Um, you'll get a lot of opinions from different people. Yeah. Uh, get the triangle. The triangle. Remember the triangle. Um, you'll get a lot of opinions from different people, but what matters at the end of the day is that you're happy with what you submit. So if you feel something about a piece of work, it's really important that you stand by that work. You know, it's something that you believe in. 
but you know, not go out there, ask for opinions, listen to everyone. But at the end of the day, like just go with what feels right for you. That's really important too. Um, David has asked that do online students get an agency experience? And the answer is yes, it's just a virtual experience. The whole program is um is run virtually, um, including your tutorials with your agency. Um, Hui, I'm gonna point this one to you. Um, you mentioned a junior um art director copywriter combo. Um, are you talking about applying for a job as a duo? Um and if yes, how hard is it to find your first job at a creative agency as a solo art director? Do you recommend um, applying for a job as a single or a double? I mean, there's merits to both. It's a, one of those questions, you know, it relies on so many things on like whether a position is available for a team or, you know, an art director just left. And so they're looking to replace that person. So it's it's a hard one to answer off the bat. But I mean, if you find a connection at award school, I would 100% recommend pursuing it. Like my first partner I met at award school and it's so important that you have someone that you get along with that you can still tolerate after you know spending all your time with them. And it's something beautiful to grow up together. So, I mean, that's my experience. What do you think? Yeah, same for me. Like I, my first copywriter I met in award school, first lecture. Um, and we had a, you know, long and thriving relationship together. But there's going to be many opportunities once you get into award school to, to figure that out. And then obviously post-award school, how you approach, you know, getting into an agency. But in, in summary, I guess there's there's many ways in. There's so many ways yeah. in. Um, Jenna's asked about receiving feedback from practice briefs. Um, we will not be providing any feedback on additional practice briefs. This was just a one-off um, this evening. Um, we will, however, be putting practice briefs on Instagram once a week and um, and you can have a go at them. And if you want to choose to contact someone in the industry um, through your own contacts or through trade press or LinkedIn, go for it. I would I would recommend getting some feedback on your briefs. Um, Billy's asked, is it common and normal to see students completing award school and university at the same time? And in my experience, it's pretty rare. People have tended to finish um, their university and then do award school if they are doing university. Just remember, there's no requirement to go to uni before award school. There's, um, there's, there's no reason to do that. Um, in terms of the application brief, is it for print media or TV? Um, it will be focused on print and it will be a very, very simple brief. Um, we understand that you haven't done award school and that you're not experienced. It'll be very simple. And it's just looking at, at your thought process and coming up with an idea. Um, Kate's asked an interesting question, Ryan, I'll throw to you. Did you have a clear idea of what you wanted out of award school when you signed up? And if you did, did that change as you went through the course? Um, I had a pretty clear idea coming from design background. You know, I was seeing all this cool idea focused, you know, advertising. And I'm like, why am I not getting to work on that stuff and making, you know, retail catalogs or whatever it was at the time. Um, but yeah, then going through the course, you know, designer, I kind of had a pretty clear idea that I wanted to be an art director. Um, but I think it, it definitely unlocked in me, you know, an aspiration to be a creative director. Um, cause I do like discussing and talking about ideas, you know, it's, it's exciting. Um, so yeah, I guess it did kind of change towards it, towards the end. Yeah. Um, James has just asked, um, around the course and Hui, I'll throw this one to you. Is it generally for people looking to work in an agency environment or do many participants work at smaller in-house jobs? Yeah, award school teaches you to uh, identify great ideas and also how to convince people that they're great ideas because that's half the process. So we've seen a lot of people that have gone through award school and without wanting to go into an agency who have gone into clients or started their own businesses, like the things that you will learn through award school really help you in a lot of kind of different aspects of, of life and professional life. So yeah, I think... Um, you don't have to go to an agency. There are many types of creative work out there, but what you learn is clear communication and simplicity, and that's uh, so applicable for everything. 
if I can reference um, Quay's previous copywriter, for example, is now working for a game developer, you know, after being in it. <laughs> so there's, there's a few different routes you can go. Oh, I'm listening. Yeah, that's cool. Now there's been a few comments from a few of you around um, um, award school briefs and do they have to be on brand? Do they have to be a, like a real life idea? Do they have to be sort of workable? Um, well, like would a client sign off or can you go a bit crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Go wild. Yeah, go as crazy as you want, I would say. Yeah. Um, as long as it's on proposition. Doesn't have to be like something that a brand would buy tomorrow. Um, but yeah, let your imagination honestly go for a run, walk, swim, whatever. <laughs> totally. Like don't don't edit yourself so harshly, you know. Like that's the job of a creative director. Like your job as a creative is to just like be super blue sky. Like obviously don't create anything that's unethical or, you know. <laughs> terrible for the world but uh yeah stretch your creative imagination 100 percent um i'm gonna just pick out one more question um we might just go back to this has been a few um way i'll throw to you just around drawing that um, I'd like to be an art director um, and I have great visual ideas, but I just, I'm not very good at drawing. Hey, no shame in tracing. So uh, what I used to do was to grab some thin paper and just put it on my laptop screen and like get a pen and be careful you don't go through the paper <laughs> <laughs> and like trace whatever Google image I had found. Like no shame in that. Another way, if you want to be um, art directory about it is to do it on Photoshop, just kind of like go up there with your Wacom and, and trace that. But yeah, that's what I um, do. I'm going to finish up now. Um, I'd like to thank everybody um, that attended tonight. It's been a fantastic session. I'd also like to say a big thanks to Ryan and Wei for giving up their evening. Um, I've put my email in the chat. If you've got any questions or we didn't answer your question, apologies. Um, we've just run out of time. We've gone 10 minutes over, I'm aware. Um you feel free to email me with any questions or give me a call. My phone number is on our ad council website um, and um, congratulations for, for giving this a go and good luck with your um, award school application. Well done. Everybody. Uh, Ryan Wade, do you want to say any, say any final comments? Uh, just a big thank you to you, obviously, Amy, for helping us wrangle all this <laughs> superstar behind the scenes. And thanks oh. for submitting all your ideas. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. It's all been um, I'm just going to let your comments come through because we really appreciate the positive um, comments. Thank you so much. Um, it's um, Award School is is uh, a fantastic program. It's very fun. Good luck, everyone. Good luck, guys. <laughs>